Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by coronatools.com, the nation's leader in garden and landscaping tools. Listeners of The Organic View can receive 20% off their coronatools.com purchase by using the coupon code ORGVIEW. That's O-R-G-V-I-E-W. For more promotional offers, please visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. And don't forget to check out our contest section. Almost a decade ago, Dutch toxicologist Dr. Hank Tenekes predicted the mass decline of numerous species due to the widespread use of neonicotinoids. Unfortunately, his prediction has come to fruition. North American hummingbirds are in severe decline. On today's show, Tom and I are going to talk about this latest casualty of exposure to these deadly pesticides as we discuss new research conducted by a British Columbia research scientist. So I'd like to welcome to the show my co-host, Colorado beekeeper, Mr. Tom Theobald. Hello, Tom. Hello, June. It's good to be back. We've missed a week or two, and it's good to be back. This is not something that is surprising. If you take a look at the habits of the hummingbird, it really does make sense, especially since you're talking about an animal that is very, very small. They actually are, from what I understand, the smallest birds in the world. But it's how they live. They actually depend upon the nectar in order to survive. And they also consume bugs for protein. Their diet is uh, in some ways similar to the honeybee in that they exploit the flowers. And, and in many environments, particularly the mountainous environments, they're a major pollinator. The The nectar is their for source of carbohydrates, and their source of protein is insects. For the bee, the nectar is the source of carbohydrates, and the p- protein source is pollen. So they have a very similar diet. Now, this particular research paper was done on the Rufus hummingbird, which apparently travels the furthest of any other hummingbird in North America, and apparently it travels from Mexico to Alaska. It's interesting that they selected this particular type of hummingbird. Now, some of the facts about hummingbirds are also interesting because it also ties into other research that's been done on bees in regards to the impact of neonicotinoids. For example, hummingbirds can see farther than humans, they can hear better than humans, they're very smart and they can remember every flower that they've been to and how long it will take the flower to refill. Their brain is 4.2% of its body weight and that's the largest proportion in the bird kingdom. And also the fact that it has a very high metabolism. Their metabolism is roughly 100 times that of an elephant. So you're talking about an animal that's absorbing these chemicals at a very rapid rate. And if you take a look at some of the other studies that have been done on bees, the parallels are there. You can you can tease another interesting element out of this study, and we have to be careful because this is preliminary, but. What they're finding is that the hummingbirds are being affected not by cropland. This was done in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia in the, in the agricultural area. The hummingbirds are not getting these neonicotinoids by way of the crops, which would be uh, corn, perhaps canola, maybe soybeans. They're getting this contamination from non-target plants from wildflowers primarily and this supports what we've seen over the past several months of the contamination of wildflowers and the effect that that's having on the bees and that's an important element to keep in mind because one of the major proposals of the presidential's the presidential task force was plant more habitat 
They've done nothing, however, to determine whether that habitat is poisoned or not, and studies like this suggest to us that, yes, indeed, it is, and at levels that are damaging. Well, I know Dr. Hank Tanakis has done a tremendous amount of research on the impact of neonicotinoids with other species of birds, but once again, with the hummingbird, the hummingbird is a favorite amongst bird lovers. Well, I'm told that... uh, by our friend Graham White of Scotland that they don't have hummingbirds in Europe so probably that isn't something that uh, Dr. Tanakis would have focused on. Once again we're talking about the impact of a particular species by these chemicals where it's not something that's the direct result of a foliar application or seed treatment but the impact of the surrounding environment. And with all of these pollinator highways that they're trying to push, this basically proves why they really need to pay attention to the soil quality as well as the water purity. And especially since the sublethal effects of the neonicotinoids are what they are, it's going to it's going to happen more often. It's just we need to see more research done. Well, we do need to see more research, and the more evidence we have, the more obvious it is to us that this is a widespread contamination of the environment. One of the vehicles is groundwater and surface water. These are the neonicotinoids, are water soluble compounds. They migrate readily with the groundwater, and wherever we we look we're finding them in killing amounts. Now, the USDA and the EPA have very carefully avoided any kind of monitoring, and they're they're promoting this habitat, habitat, habitat concept, and certainly habitat is important, but habitat can be destructive if they don't assess what the poisoning of the environment is, and it appears that it's massive, and I've said it repeatedly. I would invite my critics, if they're out there, to challenge me on this, but what we're putting onto the land every year is the toxic equivalent of 400 to 600 billion pounds of DDT. It's almost beyond comprehension. And even the people who are fairly intimately involved in these questions are overlooking that. And of course, the EPA and the USDA don't want to turn that stone over, but this is a massive poisoning of the environment for these lower level life forms. And when we see something like the study on the hummingbirds appear, it's of no surprise to anybody who's been paying attention. We're finding this damage wherever we look, and there are hundreds if not thousands of species that are suffering the same kinds of damage, but they have no mentors. It also goes back to the study that industry was pushing from the Bee Informed Partnership, which was trying to say that everything's fine. That's basically varroa mites and beekeeping practices, so on and so forth. Hummingbirds have nothing to do with beekeeping practices, yet they're in decline. Well, you know, I don't mean to be facetious here, but if someone dies of pancreatic cancer, for example, and they have a head cold, you don't focus on the head cold. The proximate cause of that death is pancreatic cancer. And the chemical industry is doing everything it can to look elsewhere other than these chemicals. And there's an avalanche of science, peer-reviewed science, that has connected the dots We know clearly what's being done. It's an enormous environmental poisoning, and very little has been done to correct that. I think the only thing that's going to bring change is public outrage. The public has to get involved here, has to begin to demand that we stop being poisoned, not simply for the earth on which they live, but for their children and grandchildren and their own health. We're beginning to see health problems as a consequence of these this family of pesticides, and of course we were assured that they were safe. Well, that may be true, Tom, but unfortunately you have several industries that are not ready to acknowledge 
the impact of these chemicals because their own industries are dependent upon purity of the products that they push. For example, if this particular bird, if the research further is able to substantiate that what we're saying is the direct result of neonicotinoid exposure, that's going to affect numerous industries, especially the organic industry. Yes, there are some serious questions for the organic industry because it appears that the contamination of soils and groundwater is substantial and and wide-reaching. Uh, Iowa, for example, we talked about the uh, study in Iowa earlier this year where it was found in the drinking water. This is after the drinking water has been processed. This is drinking water, not irrigation water. And uh, we're finding these chemicals wherever we look, and the implications are of great concern. The people need to begin paying attention and speaking out and demanding some action. You keep saying that, but the bottom line is, is that how are they supposed to say anything when you have industry that has very deep pockets that keeps insisting that the problem with the bees has been solved, it's the varroa mites, it's everything else, and then you have industries that are supposed to be concerned about sustainability and the environment, so on and so forth, that are not even acknowledging what's happening. Well, there are many ways that they can become involved. I think they have to begin to speak out. We have a wide number of listeners. Those listeners need to do the homework and begin to speak out. The only thing that's going to change this is public outrage. We're being massively poisoned. It certainly the environment is, and it looks like human beings are as well as the, as the studies emerge and we understand the science. These are very dangerous chemicals, and we're exploiting the environment and the human population for profit. Interestingly enough, we've had several studies that have shown that they really don't benefit the farmers in many cases, that the farmers are paying a premium price for treated seed without any reasonable expe expectation that that's going to increase their yield and offset the price. This is a scam. This is, a, as I've said before, this is marketing, not agronomy. But the bottom line is, is that with the farmers, if they're being pushed in order to use the latest technology that's available and when they're put in a corner where they don't have any choices, especially if they want to sell their their crops. Well, one thing one thing leads to another, June. What the reason that the farmers are in the position that they have are is because they have little choice. They can't find untreated corn seed because the chemical companies have monopolized the seed business and I'm not a lawyer, but I think it's clear that what the course that uh, these companies have taken violates antitrust laws, and yet there's been no talk of, of calling them to account. It's a, it's a far-reaching situation. It's far beyond the bees. It's far beyond the hummingbirds. It's the fundamental failure of our political system. Oh, this isn't just because of the current administration. This has been going on for quite yes, some time. Yes, we've uh, dealt with the Office of Pesticide Programs in the EPA for many, many years, and they were uh, completely captured by the chemical industry long before Trump and Pruitt ever showed up. Uh, Trump has said he's going to drain the swamp. It appears that what he intends to do is introduce some of his own alligators and predatory snakes into the swamp. That's his, his remedy. And uh, I don't know where it's going, going to lead, but from the beekeeper's standpoint, it can't get much worse. Well, from a conscious consumer's perspective, it just seems as though it, it is getting worse. More and more species are declining and it's not that they haven't been declining before, it's just there's now an emphasis. And unfortunately, I think this is going to be what we're going to see more and more of. Tom, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Joan, for offering me the opportunity to uh, speak out a bit. I hope that the people are listening and I hope that they're paying attention. And, and I thank those listeners who tune in each week to hear what we have to say. These are very important issues. 
Folks, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at questions at theorganicview.com. Tune in next week as Tom and I continue the discussion. Thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon.